one question about the church needing to take a quote a firm stand against the Islamification of this country um, another asks, how do you love your neighbor if he hates you brackets Islam I'd caution against the use of a word like Islamification the percentage of the population of this country that is Muslim remains very very tiny what I suspect people are worried about is a long-term well, two things a long-term demographic shift in Europe with the growing numbers of an Islamic population and the perception that in this country a certain bias is shown towards the Islamic community out of a nervousness of offending them the latter problem I think illustrates quite a level of confusion and sometimes ignorance in government about the nature of religious communities themselves. A reactive and anxious attempt to forestall extremism, not very successfully, combined with a view that treats all religious communities in this country as almost equally eccentric and alien and one of the conversations which I regularly have to have across the river from Lambeth Palace in London in the Palace of Westminster is to try and say to people in government actually the Church of England present in every community in this land remains a very distinctive vehicle for promoting community regeneration and understanding and that's part of the history and part of what's special about the Church of England don't be afraid of working with the grain of that and don't think that in order to relate to faith communities overall you have to have a representative group of every single religious tradition for every particular purpose in ways that disable decision making on the ground relations between Christian and Muslim communities in many of our cities are good actually I spent some time last year on a similar diocesan visit in the Northwest and discovered some very good practice going on in Burnley and other Northwestern towns. A year before that, on a visit to Birmingham, I opened a family center run jointly by the local church, a rather evangelical church, and the local mosque. Now those buildings of friendship are part of the answer to both those questions. And they arise not from Christian nervousness, but from Christian confidence. We're not embarrassed to be ourselves as Christians, and in our approach to Muslim neighbors, we are confident in being who we are. Not aggressive, not oppressive, but happy in our skins. We work from that, we engage, and in that way, in that way, we seek for a future which is not Islamified, which is not simply the imposition of another tyrannical religious authority. We seek for a way in which we can together be citizens. And that's, I think, rather important here. As for loving the people who hate us, well, I'm afraid there's nothing very new about that. That's really what Jesus is talking about. Um, and I guess that's what he meant by loving our enemies you know um, we're called on to love full stop and that love is as I was saying not just a matter of doing good it's also a matter of being able to, to seek always something that the stranger even the most threatening stranger might have to give you so don't assume Muslims hate Christians, full stop. Don't assume that there is a single coordinated alien plot to take over this country. Recognize the terrifying reality of extremism. And remember that it terrifies most Muslims as much as it does anybody else. And ask what can be done in terms of local friendship to draw out this common citizen identity 
that we seek. Heaven knows it's, it's not as simple as that sounds, but that's some of what I'd want to say in response. I'm quite happy for Christians to stand up and defend who they are. But I think they should do it in a careful, realistic awareness of the fact that the average Muslim in this country and elsewhere is a lot more like the average Christian at the human level than you might suspect and be willing to work with the grain of that.